Margaret Richardson. I'm Margaret Richardson, and I come here today as a wife, a mother, a sister, a grandmother. And 2014, I was stricken with a condition that Emily's familiar with, evidently, trigeminal neuralgia. And I'm a tomboy, grew up kicking the guys in the shins and running around the yard like a boy. I never thought that I would be relegated in a fetal position wasting away on prescribed opioids in my bed. I'm still, from the onset of the trigeminal neuralgia, in spite of two wonderful surgeries at Emory, recovering from the devastation of the prescribed opioids on my stomach. I took them only four months because now my face and head are full of wires. I have a transmitter to try to override the pain from the trigeminal neuralgia. When the pain wins, you land on the floor and scream out like an animal. It's a tough situation to be in. And when the one legal solution, opioids, as you know, can cause so many grim side effects, I read recently that 58,000 South Carolinians this year will die from opioid overdosing. And at this point, when I took what I was allowed to take and prescribed to take, I withered away. I had to stop taking them. My rig, as I affectionately call it, worked for three years. A year ago, April, out of nowhere, the screaming, because I woke up. And trigeminal neuralgia is like having a Bunsen burner turned on in the side of your head. It's not something that you can ignore. And since the one legal solution, opioids, almost killed me. Because I have to be honest, without my husband to feed me, I was too weak to get out of the bed to even walk to the kitchen to feed myself. And another thing about the opioids, with a lot of people, I can't speak to all of them, is it's not just that it wrecks your stomach or puts you to bed. It takes you out of life. Yes, it blocks the pain. But in addition, I had to quit my job. It steals your life, and I wasn't about to take when it came back the very thing that almost ended everything for me. So I looked for something new, and because of four years of this condition, people knew I was suffering, and some people came forth. I didn't even know what medical cannabis was until last fall, and quite frankly, I can understand why it's overwhelming to you all because the stereotypical Woodstock hippie is what a lot of us think of. But that's been replaced by tiny children with 100 epileptic seizures per hour, or people like me who are suffering, or whether our precious soldiers have post-traumatic stress disorder. And off of what they have mimics what I have with the blast in their head. And I was told by one of the statisticians at Emory that not only do our veterans get the pain, which is intractable, but also the memory of being blown up or whatever else happens to them. So I just implore you to please give those of us in need a chance. I'm a law-abiding citizen. I cannot tell you what it felt like to come into possession of something that, A, I didn't know if it was going to be damaging, I don't know if it's what's on the label is true because it's not regulated, but my only choice was to scream in pain, so I opted to try it. I have to creep around like a criminal. If I want to go on a trip or get in my car, I have to worry about being pulled over. And just a quick example, and I'm almost finished, but I went to a wedding in Greenville, South Carolina. I didn't want to get my hosts who were driving me in trouble because my husband was out of town. I went to the wedding, and shortly after the bride and groom began to dance, I had an attack. I staggered out. I tried to hit the Uber app. I could not do it. I was shaking so hard. My friends witnessed what only my husband has seen. The sobbing you can't stop, 
trying not to scream, doing your natural childbirth breathing so that you can control yourself. Got to the hotel. They wanted to call the paramedics. And I said, please let me get to my room to my medicine, which was medical cannabis. And what I learned is medical cannabis is anti-inflammatory. So my condition's neurological. Instead of the grim side effects associated with opioids, I'm able to take something that actually stops the pain. I've gotten to get up, get dressed, go to a child's ball game, be a semblance of a wife to my husband. And I'm not here for just me. I'm speaking for your constituents all over this wonderful state who are suffering in silence or don't have a husband to care for them and drive them up here because I couldn't get myself here. And finally, I will close with this. Please do not let a spirit of fear keep you from allowing people with legitimate need to go to a doctor and get medical cannabis that will treat their pain or their suffering because a no vote basically means our choices are opioids. And I've already discussed what that would mean to me. And if you read the headlines, you know what it will mean to a lot of other people. Please give us a chance to be treated with something that can actually help our conditions. And don't let us creep around in fear, or I'll be just very open with you. I truly believe, if this sits for years, that every year, Emily knows people and I don't even know her, but you will have constituents suffering, dying, many of them taking their own lives because physically there is only so much someone can endure when they are in blinding pain 24-7. So I thank you for your consideration and I would also like to say I have such confidence in Tom Davis and this body of lawmakers that you all can craft a fine bill that is so strictly regulated it will not behoove people to break the law. And I'm so grateful for SLED and our law enforcement who put their bodies in line to protect us every day that they can enforce the legislation that you all come up with. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Ms. Richardson. Is there any question? If, uh, Senator from Richland and then Anderson, real quickly. Thank you, Ms. Richardson. I just want to say thank you for coming. Thank you for the courage to say what you've said. And uh, my only regret is that I hope that all of my colleagues, the entire Senate, in fact, the entire General Assembly, um, could have heard your remarks. Thank you, God bless you, and thank God for your husband, a great friend, former colleague. Um, but just thank you, very moving, and um, it is, and I would say your testimony and others that I've heard is the reason I support this bill. I'm a pastor, a minister. My father was a pastor and a minister. His father was a deacon. Our whole family, a family of ministers so this is not about religion um, this is about what you have spoken of here today so thank you for coming and senator from buford senator davis and others who've worked years and he and i've talked about this and worked on this so I, I hope and pray that we will get an opportunity to vote on this bill and i hope and pray that one day you can return to columbia and you can witness a bill signing with the governor. Thank you. May God bless you.